So we drive to get it and we're with my dog and her two-year-old. It's like, I don't, like if we would have crashed or something would have happened, I mean, I hope I would have died because the the trauma that would have ensued from losing her two-year-old or my dog or her would have killed me. So just the decisions are freaking horrible. But um, we we think that my uh, my sponsee sister had taken the cocaine and I accused or I said, why did you take it? And she just lost her mind at me um, saying such hurtful stuff via text message. And I was just bawling my eyes out because it was it was so hard to hear like you druggy bitch and you this and that. And I wasn't even saying anything to her. Truly, I was just like, OK, can you please like drop my car off at my house and. It was really hard. I think she might have been using it, to be honest with you. Um, but I don't know, and I can't prove it she, in the way she reacted. Anyways. Um, so I ended up going home with my friend, and we continued to use. And my uh, friend's drug dealer came over. And what did he bring? Um, more cocaine. But he brought mushrooms. And I haven't done mushrooms in forever. So I'm like sitting there going, okay, I'll try some. So I try some and I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling it. Take more. Oh, I'm not feeling it. Take more. Oh, I'm not feeling it. Take more. And so I'm having issues for like three days. Um, it was really, really bad. It got me in this really bad depression. Um, I, I ended up taking a bunch of tramadol also because I ended up thinking like, oh, I just don't want to feel like this, whatever. And we were drinking, we were drinking wine because my friend had lost her keys and then lost my keys. So we couldn't get in any of our cars. So we couldn't go anywhere to get vodka. Thankfully, we didn't drive. But uh, yeah, so I took mushrooms, I took tramadol, and I was then looking for heroin. And I've never done heroin before. And it's like, what are you doing? You just want to do every drug you can possibly get your hands on. So I was texting her drug dealer, like, do you have heroin? And uh, thankfully, he didn't. But then my next thought was like, I need to go to rehab. And so I'm just so thankful that I ended up making that decision. Because she was she was saying, no, don't, you don't need to go to rehab. You can just get sober with me here. No big deal. This will be fine. And I was like, there's no way, no freaking way. I feel so bad. I, I went from normal to completely incapacitated in five days, like literally five days. So that's why I say progressive is an understatement. It's like, I couldn't function and I love my life, like sober and and everything that I've had and everything that I've worked for, I love it. I truly love it. And so how do you get to the place where you don't want to even live anymore because of the drugs that you've done for five days is just beyond me. Um, I never want to touch them again, ever. Um, and so I just, yeah. I, it's horrible. That's really, that's really awesome, Heather. So let me ask you a question. What's your opinion of this 12-step 12, 12 program? What's my opinion of it? Mm -hmm. I love it. I think everyone should do it, to be honest with you, uh, uh, addict or not. I just think it's a, it's such a good program just to be better in life. Like, doesn't matter if you're an addict, alcoholic, or anything, um, because it really causes, it causes you to actually look inside and see what's going on and why we do certain things. I mean, there's tons of other people out there that have other issues that wouldn't be identified um, as drugs or alcohol I in particular. So what do you think works in recovery? A lot of things. There's a lot of things that I did last time. Um, I, you know, I would, I would go to, and there's, there's things that I know that I didn't do and I'm doing this time. So like I would go to meetings and I got a sponsor and I started working the steps, you know, but every time I'd relapse, I'd have to go back. So I worked steps one through three, probably four times. Um, and I would go to meetings, but I'd be so fear, fearful, like I didn't want to talk. I didn't really want to be like seen. Um, I didn't have the confidence to go up to n new people and ask for their numbers. And one of the hindrances I had was I had friends that had like eight to 10 years. And when I got out of my rehab the last time, that's who I went to meetings with. And so it, it, didn't allow me to go like I use it as a crutch to not go meet other people and not um, get newcomers numbers. So this time around, I'm blessed that I that I did relapse, even though it's a bad it's a bad 
thing to have happen, but I ended up going to the camp and then that allowed me to meet people that are new in recovery and getting out and doing what I need to be doing and going to meetings and talking and getting a sponsor and doing the steps and everything that we need to be doing uh, and living in an SLE. Like I never thought I'd make this decision to live here. And, and other people are like shocked that I made this decision, but I truly, truly, truly want it this time. And so I had to make some changes that I didn't choose to do last time. So what does your future look like, Heather? Super bright. Um, I, I have so many more goals and aspirations that I want to do. I really want to, uh, get into, like, I'm, I want to go to back to school and become a counselor and do PTSD counseling for my department. Um, because I, that's one of the areas in the fire service that's, that's really lacking and needs a lot of attention to. So, so I want to do that. Um, I also really want to get into something with a recovery in a different way and just helping people not like for money or anything, but just like you do. Sure. I love this. Um, and so, and I, and I really want to have a family. I really want to have children. And one of the main driving forces for me with this and it is, you know, to be honest with you, it's not even not doing, not drinking or doing drugs. It's finding out what I like and who I am and what, um, you know, getting right with myself so I can choose healthy people in my life, like healthy, a healthy guy, like you attract what you feel about yourself. So if you feel mm -hmm. shitty about yourself, you're going to attract someone that's shitty to you. That's awesome. Heather, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today on the stories of addiction podcast to all our listeners. We wish you to stay sober and be happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.